G'day, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, your acrylic guru. And today I'm going to do an acrylic painting of a moon over the beach with a June path. Also want to say these are the shirts that I'm doing with a picture of my painting, a painting that I've done. You can also buy. You can message me on Facebook, search me for Ian Atlas on Facebook, and you can order a shirt from me there. You can have a shirt with my name on them or with my name and a painting that I've done printed on there and they are 90 Australian dollars okay it's not too much to ask what I think anyway I'll get set up here now the canvas that I'm going to use there's the size of the canvas up there right now it's a canvas board it is not a stretch canvas and today I'm not using my microphone I'm just going to use it without it and see if the sound can be a bit louder for a lot of seniors out there and some other people that have devices that cannot get the sound louder than a desktop computer okay all right let's get started now down on my palette I've got my flowing white paint mixed with retarder that's what I'm going to prime up my canvas board with okay and the canvas board has no gesso on it. And also I'm gonna be incorporating some phalo blue and dioxin purple. My spray bottle, and I wanna just dampen my canvas board like that. And then we'll get the flowing white paint with the retarder on it just so we got something to prime this canvas board up with okay so let's get this done we'll go all over the canvas board why I give it a bit of spray is it helps this acrylic flowable paint just to spread across the canvas rather than it being a very dry chalky surface and dragging along there you know what I mean Now I'll get the phalo blue with retarder in there and we'll get all that mixed from the brush. Alright, so this is all wet retarder with that flowing white paint. I've got my phalo blue. Now I'm going to have some sky here and some water, okay? So let's just start crisscrossing this into the painting. Bring it down to where the water values are going to be as well. Somewhere like that, crisscross it in. Now, excuse my fingers a minute. Now, while I've done that, I don't want it just a pay, I just a plain blue. So what I'm going to do is I'll get some just of that flowing white paint and just sort of break it up a bit so there's different lights as different tones in there, okay? All right, now I'll grab my two inch blending brush and I wanna blend this so as we get rid of all those sweeping brush strokes. Blend it out into the white there. It's up to you how you wanna to tone your sky and shadow it and whatever. I'm just doing this the way I would do it, but this is, you, you first get your sky color on there, then we'll incorporate some depth and darkness and clouds and tones in there, all right? So let's just get this blended in. While you're blending, be sure to keep wiping and cleaning your brush. I'm gonna blend this out into the white there. And while you blend, you'll find that you're making all sorts of beautiful and wonderful depth, shadows and shading within your paint. Now for the bottom half, roughly where the water's going to be. I'm gonna wipe my brush and just sort of pull that across this way like that. So we'll get the horizontal lines like so. All right, I'm grabbing my hog bristle fan brush. I just find this brush comfortable to promote paint to the canvas. So I'm gonna get this to darken up the corners. Now you, you want you wanna get your brush loaded up and then start tapping some of it off because sometimes I've done it before, you put it onto the canvas and it drips. 
Now I want to sweep it across from the top, get that corner in there, nice and dark, down here. We'll do one side at a time. Spear pointed into the centre a bit, I like to, to give it some sort of arty look. We can come down into the water there a bit as well. Now just put that down, grab your blending brush, make sure it's wiped, and then start merging that dioxine into the phalo blue, and it's gonna give us some of those sort of night, dark character colors we need in our sky there. Now wipe your brush, see how it's picking up? You gotta wipe it, we'll come up here, dance your blending brush across, like this. Okay, that's one side pretty much done. Now we'll do the other side. Now I've cleaned that brush that I had the dioxine purple on so I can load it up again so it's not gonna have contaminated paint in it, all right? And we'll get this side done as well. So let's blend this in. Grab your blending brush. And blend that. Now with your blending, feel and look at what's happening to the paint on your canvas and work it out from there. Don't just think, oh, you gotta twist it like this and hope for the best. You never hope for the best in painting. Put some thinking behind your movements, okay? So we've pretty much got this color in the sky. Now we've gotta get some of those values downstairs as well. I'm gonna bring some of this around. Now, I won't worry about cleaning the brush too much. I'll just sort of get some values here, just like that. That's it. And I'll grab this other brush that I had, and I wanna try and pull that through the watercolors, keeping them horizontal. Just so we've got some horizontal movements in that water there. Now over here, I wanna put some white. Now I'm looking at my sky, I want the bottom sort of soft and white. So I'm grabbing my good quality white paint on my fan brush, and I wanna sort of create some mist down here, okay? So we're just virtually going to dance this across the bottom. All this sky color, the water, the colors that are on my canvas now are wet with retarder in it, okay? So we've just sort of danced that all the way across the bottom. And then we'll pick up our blending brush and we're gonna blend this just so it's soft. I'm gonna blend the bottom side down and then the top side up. Twisting and manipulating and turning in all different ways as I'm doing it. Now this might get away with one go or you might have to do another pass again while adding some paint and blending depending on how it's going into the paint there, see? If you want it a bit more darker than that, of mist, we'll add some more. So we just simply go across the horizon line like so. And I might put a bit more in there. All right, let's get some more on there. Really push it on. There we go. So I've washed that fan brush and reapplied the paint, so I'm not gonna have dirty paint on there. Clean your blending brush, wipe it, keep, keep cleaning it and wiping it. Now we'll blend this into some beautiful softness up into the sky. Wipe it. I'm not sure if some people who have trouble blending are wiping all the time or not, but if you're not, that will not help. You need to keep wiping your blending brush. See, it's picking up paint. So I'll get all this done across. I'm happy with that anyway.
taking some of that phthalo blue just to get some darker horizon on the water there. So my horizon's here, so I want to get some more darker values just back into there. Push it all into the water. This is still all damp and wet. It looks a bit chalky and mucky at the moment. Now I'm going to grab my two inch brush and I want to pull that across. Now that's working fine for me, okay? It's dragging through those colours and we've got some shadows and tones in that water surface, okay? But if it was too dry for you, you just get your spray bottle and that will allow the acrylic to move. See there? I don't know if you noticed that, but that just moved a lot more easier. So there's pretty much my water. So we've got our water. Okay, I've just cleaned those two brushes that I've been using, my blending brush and my applicating brush. They're both two inch brushes from the hardware store, your depot store. Now we want to do some clouds coming from the sky. So I'm getting a smaller blending brush. And what else do I want? I'll grab a smaller fan brush. So I want to make some smaller clouds coming up and so forth. But I don't want to over cloud the sky. Sometimes you can get carried away doing your clouds and by the time you sat back and had a look at it, you go, oh my God, I put too many clouds there. But that's okay, because you'll know not to do it in another painting, all right? So we're going to grab just some of this white paint on my smaller fan brush like that. Okay, I'm just chiseling it on. Now I'm looking here, I've got some atmosphere already. So we're gonna do some little clouds maybe from about here up, so we'll sort of, they're just little, so we'll do a, we'll do a couple there. Okay, put that down, grab your blending brush. Now you wanna sort of blend them, but keep the bottoms on them. Okay, there's one cloud, there's another one, and blend him up. Let's see how we go. Okay, I'll put some more on there. I'm just doing little clouds. Wipe that blending brush. So you've got to keep the tops on them, sorry, not the bottoms. What am I saying? See, I've gone and knocked all the tops off that, so I'll go and put it back. Just so we've got tops on them. And leaving the tops there, I'm using a little, so I'm virtually gone in a smaller size the way I do my clouds and blending. Wipe that brush, bring it down. Tickle them and blend them the way you normally do with your big brush. Okay, and we've got some smaller clouds in the background. Now we'll get some more over here, probably up there, there, There's still a bit at a time. I've just washed that little fan brush I've been using, so the clouds that I'm putting on are always clean and white. There we go, I'm happy with that. Okay, we're getting some clouds there. Now I'm gonna slowly get bigger, so we wanna put something about there using that small blending brush still. Carefully blend this down, but you don't want to destroy the top of the one underneath it, okay? Wipe it, that's important, keep it wiped. And if need be, just Tickle the tops like we do in acrylic because we don't sweep it up like an oil painting. It's acrylic and it's not going to work the same. So we just go like that. Now I've just added another one there. Now before I go any further, I want to get a, see this, the darker colours here. We'll, we'll put our mist in the sky. So I'll use my bigger blending brush for that. And that's going to 
mystify all that white into the dioxine and tear into the blue there just so it's got some kind of mist or glare into the sky from the moonlight we're going to have okay see the mist can be more spider webbed out not so much clumped up like a cloud that's the sort of idea you have in your mind when you're putting it on there for the mist and see the the retarder in the paint allows this to get wet and blendable looking like it does on an oil paint okay and that's how easy it is to do something like that keep wiping your brush and softly tone it into those colors the background colors all right All right, I'm pretty much finished with the sky, but before everything dries, I know I'm going to have a crest of a moon here, so I want to get some sort of a um, reference of that in the water. So we'll grab my small fan brush. I'm just getting some white paint chiseled on it. And we'll probably, somewhere here, intensify some water just to give some moonlight. About there. That'll do. Nothing's nothing special grab a brush and push it across both ways not too far across because it's not going to be a massive moon just something like that where's my other brush and now i've got a cleaner brush so i can sweep so we'll sweep it that's it beautiful that's like that and then later on we can intensify some more over that if we desire. All right, we've finished that stage. I just want to grab my cutout. I'll grab that over here for my moon. Now, a lot of you should be familiar with moons now, how I do them, and you have your own cutouts or cut a piece out. I've got a bit of um, acetate paper here with my moon size in there, I think. Which moon size? Yes, I have my moon size there. But before I do that now, at this stage, this has got to be blow dried, all right? So I'm going to blow dry that then we'll get this moon in there. Now that's all dry. I'm going to work out where I want my moon. I'm using this size hole here. And there's my reflection. And I want to sort of... I want it about there. Right about there. So we'll sit him on there and take that down. Now we're only going to use the white. And I have a mid-tone grey mix stuff okay well actually you can buy it in a tube okay and that's all we need the white and the grey and your a good quality household sponge now the sponge you want are ones with the finer holes in it the ones with bigger holes such as you can see the difference in sponges that's all right for a bigger bigger one, but for the size that I'm normally doing, I find this sponge is quite good. Now what I'm doing, because it's only a crested moon, it's not going to be a half or a full moon, I'm going to grab some white and the mid-grey, mix it up, so it's a very contaminated white, not quite grey. I'll grab some more in there. Okay. Now I'm dampening my sponge. I'll pick up some of that paint. So it's pretty much contaminated white on the grey side. And I only want my crest here. So I'll just hold the stencil like so. And I'll come... Oh, I don't want to come too wide. And what we have is enough of a crest there just to highlight with some pure white. Now I have the pure white on my sponge. 
and I'm just tipping the edge there like that if you can I hope you can see that pull that off make sure you clean your stencils straight away now I'm going to bring the cloud just in front of that again to sit it back all right well, let's sit it back down behind some clouds do one at a time because the paint's dry grab your little blending brush and quickly try and blend it back down. There we go. Just putting these clouds back in front of the moon to sit him back like here. Okay, we finished the moon. We've set the clouds back in front of it to push the moon back. Now I want to get some of this here and then just give it a bit more intensity. Now you watch this. See how dry that is and chalky? This is when you wet your brush. And we can push that through. Maybe we could use a smaller brush. Because this one's a bit big. That's a good thing about interactive acrylics. If you have a good paint, you can do good things with it. Alright? I've got some a roll of paint on my knife and just for the sake of it being a painting I want to just separate the water and the sky just with some intense reflections of the moon there just like so alrighty we're getting there now I want to put the foreground in and I'm going to put that in with a dark color first so we can get some depth and some shadows for our foreground okay I'm using my very stiff bristled directional brush that I call it I'm grabbing some Payne's gray with some water just so it'll move across the canvas now I want me dunes about here coming up about here and coming across because I want one side higher than the other roughly about there okay I've got it mapped in so what I'm going to do now is just paint that in and I'll I want the edge broken up I don't want it a, a nice tight sharp edge the footpath we can probably have a bit sharper but see, all this paint underneath is dry. If it was not dry, being acrylic, it will start mudding up and mixing and making a dog's breakfast out of everything and you'll be getting frustrated with your work. All right, now all my foreground is dry, ready to put the colours in there. Now I'm going to start with the path. Now the colours for the path, I've got smoked pearl, okay? And what I've done, I've got a little bit of yellow ochre or yellow oxide and I've mixed it down to this tone here. And then from that, I've added some white. So I've got a couple of shades of my sandy colour for the path. So I'm grabbing the pearl white onto my flathead brush, okay? And we'll start at the front of the path here. Now you don't want to, you don't want to solid it, make it solid all the way, okay? So we're just going to start from here. I'll just cover that black first, roughly where my path's going to go, somewhere there. Now we'll get this, and we'll we'll lace it over the area where I want the path. Just that's what I call lacing it over. 
and get some more on my little palette up here. Okay. Now that's why I've mixed those other two colours to give it some shadow and tone. Now I'm picking up the one where I mixed the yellow oxide in there and now I want to start getting this onto it, leaving it breaking into the black there. Now we'll get some with the mix down with the white and we'll Put different shadows in there like that. All right, slowly getting there. We've got the path in. We've got the dunes blacked out, ready to put some color on top of them. So we're just gonna use a forest green, maybe a sap green and a yellow green, okay? To give it the highlights and shadows and everything. Now down here, I've got my forest green, which is the darker of them. Now. You want it reasonably wet so it's going to come off your brush and flow off your brush onto that black paint. So we'll start on the right hand side here and we'll see how this brush is going to work. Just to get some grass coming over onto the path, leaving some blacks. Now you might not pick this up on the camera but this color is laying down the foundation for the other greens to go on top and we're not killing the blacks either. Okay, and follow the lay of the land. You want the top edge stippled and grassy looking. Coming into the path here and there, bleeding into the path. Okay. Now I've got the sap green on my fan brush and I'm pushing it up, just getting some grass shapes. Now this is the second green, not killing all the darks. So it's pretty much a green June we're getting on here. Push it up so we get some of those grassy looks about it as well. onto the path, coming back, leaving some shadow. Turn your brush around if you need to. All right, and then we're just gonna highlight this with some yellow green. Now, before I put the yellow green on, I've dried that. Each time I do a different color, I've been drying it. It's important to know that because if you don't dry it, your colors are going to mud up. Okay. I don't want this to be too... Well, let's just see how that's going to look. Just something to highlight it now. So, certain areas we want to leave dark. Come off the path there. I'm getting from the path done first, and then I'll just come into the hill or the dune. Also, what you can do as you're doing this, if you've done a, like I've done here, I've done a big bright blob, just ignore it for the time being. Finish doing what you're doing, all right? And then I'll just show you what you can do to fix that up. It's quite easy. It's not a big problem. Get the top of that nice and grassy looking. There we go. So we've got a lot of darks in there. Now this bit here, grab some of the, wash your brush. Grab some of the sap green that we used. Okay and just sort of darken it back in, blend it back in with some darkness. Okay, and we've got rid of that bright blob. Yellow green for those beginners, it's an actual color you can buy from your art supply shop. It's called yellow green. It's a color you probably don't have to mix up. It's got all the yellow, it's this color that I'm using right now is called an actual yellow green from the tube. 
I quite fell in love with it when I first discovered this colour. Alright, so we'll click the top of that up there, yeah. And get some... There we go. How's that look in the monitor? Now see, to me, I want to get a bit of sap green and just darken it up a bit. I've overdone it there a bit, so I'll get some sap green and just... There we go. See that? Wet on wet. We've toned it down a bit. It's not so cartoony. See that? Okay, now all I want to do now, I'm going to dry that again and then we'll just put in the, the fence because normally on a beach they have a, a fence separating the footpath from the dunes. I know they do that here in Australia, so we're going to do it on this painting here as well. Okay, I've got some black Van Dyke brown and also Van Dyke brown mixed with some white. So the first thing I want to do is get the black and put in my posts for the fence along the dunes there okay so we'll put one about there one about here and another one about here let's say about there okay and for the other side we'll put one about here they don't have to be straight. And we'll put one about here. Okay, now I'll just thicken them up. All right, now this black, I've dried that. Okay, now we're gonna get the Van Dyke brown and put the wood color in there just to make it look like a post, all right? All right, so let's get some Van Dyke brown and just sort of scratch in it here and there. Don't kill all the black. We'll sort of keep one side darker than the rest. Just let it scratch in there from your brush, like so. It's finding the, the right simple colours to get certain rocks and timber and different effects. Once you find those colours, remember them and stick to them in all your work. Okay, just like that. Now you don't have to dry this bit, it's only been a little bit we've put on there. Now we're gonna grab some of the um, Van Dyke Brown mixed with white. Now we're gonna highlight these posts. Now I'm grabbing the Van Dyke Brown that we mix with the white. And now we'll sort of create that round post look come down the one side this is the highlighting color and scratch it in just any old way so the Van Dyke brown under that's acted for depth for this color a little bit of a round post there Now to me that's a bit light, I want to darken it up a bit. So see what I've done, I've got some crimson red and the Van Dyke brown and I've just mixed it up here. So let's, oh, yeah, it's a... you can leave some of the lights there but I want to sort of cover it back because when it looks too light it just gives that painting that lesser value or quality in the look it should be. All right, we'll put some wire on that. Now I'm just using the grey out of the tube for the for the wire along my fence. It doesn't have to go all the way across because sometimes the um, the light only shines on bits of it. So I'm just doing it that way, okay? So just getting a thin roll on your knife now i'd like to come into the post 
and come out of the picture, into the post and out of the picture. Tied your knife up again. Into the post and out of the picture. Because it's going into the post, okay? So that's it. Okay, I'll just put a, a signature on this. More we'll sign, we'll whack a frame on that. See how it looks. Okay. There you go. That don't look too shabby. All right, I hope you like that easy exercise. Bit of a moon over the water and some dunes and a path leading up to the beach there. We could probably call that a, a moon walk because you're walking towards the moon setting, I think. So I'm gonna call that one moon walk, all right? Now, please subscribe to my channel. Check out my blooper channel as well. Those bloopers get posted regularly. And if you wanna buy a T-shirt, be sure to message me in Facebook and we'll get the ball rolling for that, okay? If you like what I've just done here, you tell a friend, but if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.